Hey, do you have a sec? Hey, it's Christian. It's December 24th, Christmas Eve. It's day one, the last day of the Christmas Fitness Advent Calendar. And if you've stuck with me for the entire 24 days, thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing and, uh, and watching along. Whew, it was a good one today. I have just finished and had about five minutes break to get some water and uh, get my mic, but I am still gassed. I am completely burnt out from this one. Uh, I got to about the second to last block and I was feeling it, I was feeling done. And I don't think it's because I'm tired from this being a hard workout, which it is. I think I'm tired from 23 days of doing this workout and especially in the last few where that length of, of the workout really does build up. Typically I'm doing four to six days a week of, of workouts, but here it's been 23 days straight. So if you've stuck along, thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for challenging yourself to do this. If this is the first video you're watching, great, jump in because 24 moves are headed your way. And the new move we added today is the grand finale is the starfish push-up. This is a strength move, not about speed, not about cardio. This is about, you get a wide foot push-up and then you go up, balance on one side, get back down to your push-up, and then balance on the other side. And you're holding this, the balance for one second, and it is in this starfish shape. That means your arm is up and your leg is up, and that is what makes it challenging. That's why I left it to the very end, because it's not something I wanted to do 20 times. Whereas the regular push-up, we did. So, grab your mat, grab your water, grab a towel, you're definitely gonna need it afterwards, and let's get going. We're gonna, uh, you hit pause if you need to go and grab those things. If you're playing along with me at home, and we're gonna go in three, two, one, and go. So get that push up down and then balance up on one side. Effectively here, I find the easiest way to do it is to roll my hips up first and then lift my hand up into that starfish position. And then I can just drop the whole thing down, do my push up, and then on the other side, same thing, hip goes up and then my arm goes up. Uh, that way I'm able to maintain the balance a little bit longer. It is a tough thing to balance on a, on a side arm. And if you need to modify this, keep both feet down and just twist the one arm up into the air. To make it a twisting push up. Two, one, and we're done. Next, we're going into the side leg lift skater. This is a, an iso squat with the leg held out. 15 seconds on each side. So let's start on the left leg and go down. And you're holding that right leg up as you reach your right hand across to your left foot and you're squatting down. Try and keep your chest and eyes up as much as possible. I know you are gonna bend forward, but the deeper you squat, the higher you'll be able to keep that uh, the, the, the uh, chest up. Switch legs here, and we're gonna go on the other side now. So reaching your left hand across to your right foot. Left leg is up the whole time. The higher you can get this, the better. This is all about that, the outside of the hip flexor. It works hard, and you're done here. Two, one, and done. You can go ahead and get down to the ground here in this transition. We have 10 seconds before the mountain climber starts. And this is a regular mountain climber straight up the middle. Two, one, and go. So from the high plank position, you're bringing alternating knees into your chest. And if you can run them out, great. If you can only walk this, you need to slow it down, that's fine. But try and bring your, your knee as close to your chest as you can. It is a little bit tough if you've got long legs and you can't keep your back as straight as you should be able to. If your shirt is riding up, that's a good sign that you are bending your back and you're arching your back too much. So try and keep a level back and bring those knees in as quick as possible. Mountain climbing, you're done here in three, two, one, and done. We're going into this transition to the Heisman high knee punch. So you're gonna bring your knee up nice and high and punch the opposite hand. Two, one, and go. Now you're hopping and holding this knee up for a one, a one count. So if you're doing it as a, a one and down and then a one and down, this is what you wanna do. And punch the opposite hand, holding your knee up and hop to the other foot. If you need to take the impact out, stepping is fine, but you still wanna make sure you're keeping that knee up nice and high. You effectively want it above your hip to get the most out of this move. You got six seconds left, so keep working hard. This one's not about speed, yet it is the cardio move. So two, one, and done. You got a nice 30 second break here. Uh, you can see I am just taking this time to breathe. And that's what these 30 second intermissions are for. You wanna take the opportunity to get the uh, air into your lungs, give your body a quick break and bring that heart rate back down after we've just spiked it from a cardio move. We're gonna go into the sky for next. And today you can see I've brought out my, my, uh, power, my power assist, my push up assist stands. They really do help. So either these or dumbbells will help you with this one. We're going in one second, so 
Let's go. Get up into that nice table position with your hips up nice and high on your heels if you can. Flat foot's okay too, but what you're gonna do is drop down, you're gonna bend your elbows and drop your butt down. Don't forget to bend your elbows, don't forget to drop your butt. You wanna do both, and then you're gonna return back up to a uh, tabletop with your hips up nice and high and your arms are straight, but your elbows are going straight back behind you. This is to work the triceps. So the, the push-up stands allow you to get more depth in here. So even if you did this with a chair, that would be an option, but we're done here, so let's get that out of the way. And next we're going to another isometric move. This is the iso chair leg lift. So get down into a chair position. We're going to two, one, and go. So your arms are overhead and you've got one leg up, straight leg, flex that foot, get the knee up above the other knee, and the other one, your right leg or whichever one's holding your weight is, uh, is bent. You keep your weight into your heel. We're gonna change it up and go, switch legs. And now you've got the other leg up and you're keeping a nice low chair with your biceps up by your ears, looking straight ahead, sort of down towards the ground. And breathe here, this is a relaxed move. Two, one, and done. Get down on the ground, get that mat. We're going to the bicycle next. Now remember, this is important not to pull on your head. So get on the ground, going in two, one, and go. Twisting your core, you're keeping your crunch engaged the entire time as you twist elbow to the outside of the knee if you can, inside if you're not quite as flexible or don't have the core strength, but you want to maintain that straight leg. Don't let your foot touch the ground as you've extended it out. If you can get it up at a 45 degree angle, that's your intensification here, but you want to try and twist your core to the outside. So keeping your shoulder blades off the entire time, twisting and getting the elbows to the outside. Again, don't pull on your head, don't pull on your neck, just knuckles by your temples. Two, one, and stand up, We're going into that burpee next. Now this one today, Henry challenged me to do push-ups in my burpees, so I took him up on it, and I did. Two, one, and go. You can see when I drop down into my high plank, I'm actually dropping into the bottom of the push-up right away, so really the hard part is the pushing back up, where I'm popping my feet back up to do a jump and then back down. So there are very, very many modification options here. You can do a step back and back up, and you can just reach your arms up for the sky. You can stand up on your tiptoes, you can jump, you can jump with your knees up, or you can uh, just stand there and look good. But regardless of what you do, you're working hard. Two, one, and done. You got 30 seconds to take a break here. And you can see I'm gonna set up for the next one because I know the cardio move at the end of the next block is the diamond drill. So I'm gonna set up my markers and get my mat ready for uh, doing the ISO bridge. This is the uh, marching bridge, which we've been seeing for quite a while now. And uh, I wanna get down on the mat. So it takes a few seconds to get everything prepped here. This 30 second transition is good for that as well as taking a quick breather. But we're going to three, two, one, and go. Get those hips up nice and high, hands pushing down on the ground if you need the extra boost, and you're gonna lift those knees towards your chest one at a time. Heels only on the ground if you can remember to do that. That helps keep your foot flexed and keep your knee locked at that angle as you bring it up. This is not about speed, this is about working the hips, working the glutes. You're helping your back strengthen here by keeping that bridge up nice and high, and of course, the front part of your, your core. So we're keeping up for four more seconds. Three, two, one, and done. Get the mat out of the way, flip over, going into that angry bear next. This is the bear hops. So hands and knees position. Three, two, one, and go. Keeping those knees two inches off the ground, you're gonna hop your feet left center, right center, and keep it up. The modification here is to step, but I don't find that to be easier. I actually find it is harder because I feel like I'm moving slower. It's like uh, sometimes you're driving in traffic on the highway, you get that traffic jam, you feel it's better to take the side roads because you're still moving, <laughs> but in actuality, it's better on the highway even if you don't feel like you're going very far. So keep hopping it out here. We're done in five seconds. Four, three, two, one, and done. Get that mat again. We're going into the CY reach. This is our core move. Get into that low sit up, that just barely crunch position. Two, one, and go. With your C, your hands up in the C shape, you're gonna, you're gonna sit up and reach up to one side, twisting to get those obliques working. Reach as far back as you can, turning as far around as you can each time. And when you go back into that C position, you're leaning back almost to the point of falling over, but not quite, you're not quite down. And then you're gonna reach up to the other side and again, twisting back as far as you can go. Use this opportunity to breathe and relax as you're doing your twists. And then you recline back into the low C. Done in two, one, and done. Get the mat out of the way. We're gonna finish off this block with the diamond drill. And this one is all about speed. Didn't quite have my rhythm today. We're going in two, one, and go. 
three markers here in my setup today. I'm going out and in and out and in, out and in all the way back and forth. And if you can maintain a rhythm, that's the best move you could do. This is about agility and getting that heart rate up. So move as fast as you can while maintaining accuracy. Think about the tire drill where it's important to get your feet inside that hole of the tire. Well, same thing here. If you can be accurate with your footsteps, that is the, the goal is to, to be agile and accurate with your movements. You're done here in three, two, one, and take a breather. Clean up those markers if you've had them out. 30 seconds here before we go into that tricep push up. So breathe, get your push-up stands or dumbbells if you want to use those. Uh, again, I find this is so much better to use a push-up stand because it really does help you increase your range of motion. It's easy on the hands and it helps you maintain form. I find my elbows can go back much smoother, much easier uh, when I'm doing this tricep push-up with the stands than without. So we're going in four seconds here. So let's get down on the ground and go. So elbows coming back, hugging that core tight as you drop into the push-up and it's about engaging your triceps and your chest, keeping a nice straight line from your head all the way to your heels, drive those heels back, but your hands should be sort of middle of your torso in line with your chest. That's where you're pushing from. You're not out wide, you're not under your shoulders, you're just sort of right in front of you and you push up and your elbows are grazing your body. You're done here in four seconds, so keep pushing through. One second and you're done. Let's get up and do the plyo knee pop next. This is that semi lunge into a jump with a knee pulling up. So two, one, and go. This is about speed, not about depth, not about height. So just work hard here. Keep those arms moving to counterbalance and help you with the momentum. We're gonna switch it up at the 15 second mark. So keep popping, get that front foot off the ground if you can. Modification is just step and switch. So if you switch it up in midair, congratulations, that's a fantastic move. I try to do it as often as I can, partly for style points, of course. Yeah, just keep working hard with the other leg here. Low sort of lunge and pop it forward. Two, one, and done. Get that mat again. We're going into the reaching sit up. And this 10 seconds just rolls. I seem, <laughs> seem to need almost 15, but we're sticking with 10. So two, one, and go. Get those arms straight overhead as you sit up and reach up, arch your back. And you lay back down, you're keeping your arms above you to take any kind of momentum out. You want to be working hard the entire time. This is not a sustained crunch, this is an actual sit up. So you don't have to worry about keeping your core engaged as you're all the way back, but you do wanna sort of flex your back as you get to the top and you can feel it in the back part of your body. You remember your core is not just the front, it's your back as well. You're done here in four seconds, so keep working hard, sit back and then reach all the way up for the sky. Woo, get that out of the way. We got jumping jacks coming up in six seconds. So get ready to go, burning the cardio here, moving those arms in two, one, and go. Get the arms jumping out and in as you're uh, moving your feet and you are working hard here. If you can go fast, great. If you need this opportunity to slow down a little bit, this is block number four. You can slow it down and just take your time, keep a good pace here, work all the way through the end. Whatever suits your fancy, you've got 10 seconds left to go. So keep going, speed up here if you can. If you've got, you can do anything for 30 seconds, but if you've got power for 10, give it. Two, one, and done. Take the 10 seconds here to breathe. I know at this point I was breathing hard, I was working hard, and I was tired. But that's okay because the next two moves are about shoulders and they don't involve much in the terms of speed and cardio. So the YTWL starts us off and then we've got the tiptoe squats. So let's just take a second here, warm up those shoulders before we get going in seven seconds. So feet are shoulder width apart and you're gonna go two, one, and go. Go. Bend, your, bend yourself forward at the hips and you're doing a, uh, a Y shape with your arms and up to the side as a T shape, elbows back for W and then flip them for the L. Now your knees should be bent slightly here just to help maintain that balance, but your arms are where we're going to be working it. Your shoulders is the, the target here for the uh, range of motion and the uh, just ease of movement. You wanna be able to keep these shoulders working hard well into your old ages, so do this kind of workout. They're done in two seconds, so let's take this 10 now and transition into the tiptoe squats. Feet slightly wider. Let's get up on those toes, bend forward at the waist and get down now. You're gonna start doing those squats. You wanna get as low as you can. Your feet are wide, but your toes are, your, is, <coughs> pardon me, your toes are where your balance is and your heels are up in the air as high as you can get them. The higher the better. I know for some people they can really get up on their toes like a ballet dancer, but not me, I just barely off the ground. 
If I'm going forward to my toes, it's because I'm almost falling over. And that's where you should be because your arms are up beside your head and you're flat as a board, as, as straight as you can get it. Squatting and getting low, done in two, one, and done. Get the mat out for the Sphinx leg lift. This is a low plank position on your elbows and you're gonna be lifting your feet. So get those padded, pad the elbows and go. Lift each leg one at a time. Can't lift them both at the same time. That's a little bit of a different move. And you wanna get one above the other, just, just barely above the other foot's fine. You don't have to lift it all the way up, but squeeze your glutes. This one's about working the booty and you're keeping your core engaged front and back. Breathe through the nose and then out through the mouth as you relax here. It's a hard move. It, uh, it doesn't seem like it. It's, it seems that you should be able to relax here, but it is still working hard because you're, you're moving those big legs. So you're done in two seconds and hop on up. We're gonna finish off with the speed skater. So get the mat out of the way and psych yourself up for this speed skater. Try and get as fast as you can. Two, one, and go. I know by this point you're starting to get a bit tired. I felt a little bit sluggish today, but swing those arms and leap from side to side. Be sure to cross the foot over behind the other knee and then stay low, keep your hips back and bend, your, bend forward, but you're keeping your chest and eyes up. And you see I'm looking ahead, trying to see where I'm going as if I were skating down the, uh, down the rink or down the canal, but this is about maintaining a uh, quick movement and everything is moving, including your arms. So keep swinging them. Two seconds left, one, and take some deep breaths here. Shake things out 30 seconds before we go into our last block, the last two minutes of work, four more moves. And we're gonna start with the push-ups. So if you need to take this time and breathe and get down on the ground and just relax here for a second as we get ready, you've got 14 seconds left here. So we're halfway through the break, but one block left of work. Oh, I know it's gonna feel so good when you're done, but you get into the push-ups. We're going in three, two, one, and go. Push hard here, drop as low as you can. You can see with these push-up stands, I've got them about fingertip to elbow width, uh, and they're 45 degrees to help me push my elbows out at the same angle, because when you're dropping into a push-up, you don't want them tight like you did with the, uh, tight like you did with the um, tricep push-ups, but you also don't want them wide. You just wanna keep your, stands sort of in line with your shoulders and you're dropping down as low as you can get it and all the way back up. You're done here in two seconds, so push hard. That's it, let's get up and get into those box squats. Again, I know you're gonna be tired. We've just got 30 seconds of box squats to do. Think of that, this is 30 seconds of box squats. And go. Squat deep and jump up and turn and squat and jump and turn. You're going left center, right center again, a little bit like the bears but you're getting a squat going. This is not a deep, deep squat. When I say deep squat, I want you to actually squat. I don't want just a little hop. I want you to get a squat going in, weight in your heels and then jump up. Not a high jump like the burpee, but enough to be able to jump and rotate 90 degrees. So move the arms, help you push through. If you can thrust your hips forward, great. You're done in two seconds and 10 second transition here into the plank. So high plank is hands under your shoulders and just straight as a board. Take this time to relax before we finish everything off and go. So your straight line, heels driven back, hands are taking the weight, spread those fingers to help keep uh, as much of a surface area as you can to hold yourself up. And you just wanna relax, breathe through this one as we have just come out of the box squats and we're gonna finish with the soccer run. So it's about taking in the air right now because you need this as a little bit of a break before the finale. So seven seconds left here. <sighs> two, one, and a hop up. Shake out those legs, take some deep breaths. We're going into the, the last push, the last cardio, the last workout of this challenge in two, one, and soccer run. 24 days. This is the 24th soccer run you've done. You've got less than 30 seconds remaining. You have done fantastic to get here so far. I want you to give everything you've got. Remember this whole thing is that you can do anything for 30 seconds. All these moves are 30 seconds only and you've only got 10 seconds left for the soccer run. So give me everything you have left. Speed up, turn this into a soccer sprint. Don't walk across that finish line, sprint across it. You're done in two, one, and congratulations. That is it, that is 24 days if you stuck with me for the whole thing. And if not, hey, that was 24 moves that you just worked hard for. It was well earned. That was the advent calendar that I wanted and I gave to you because I'm. Uh, this, is, this is what I do. 
I'm going to take a few days off to, uh, to relax now that I've finished this Christmas break, let's call it. And starting again in uh, the new year, I'll have my regular videos coming back up. That's five days a week where I put up new workouts and I'll be including some other stuff. So I might change things up just a little bit, but I am really looking forward to this. Uh, don't forget uh, Team Trees. I said I was gonna donate some money per subscriber. Uh, so far I've only got four. So if you know somebody who would benefit from these videos in my channel, have them subscribe and I'll be sure to make a donation. Uh, now I said a, a dollar or something per subscriber, but I'm gonna up that a little bit because you know I'm not gonna just donate four bucks. So if you know someone, tag them along and, uh, and have them join you in some of these fitness journey uh, because that's what we're here for is to be fit and healthy and happy and let's make 2020 the best and healthiest year we've got. So that's it. Merry Christmas. Smile and sweat.